So for quite some time, I've wanted to create a spider's nest. The giant monster spider that strikes fear into players' hearts. And um, with the upcoming face-off with Belak the Arachnomancer, it was high time to get to grips with putting that together. I did a bit of a hunt for some artwork that would inspire the look that I was after. Now I came across this guy's uh, work uh, through Pinterest. I did actually find him on ArtStation. I popped him a message to say, uh, would you mind if I use this to uh, inspire the work I'm going to do? He never actually responded. So if you ever do see this, uh, you're a fantastic artist and uh, I hope you like what I've done. But anyway, without further ado, let's do this. So when you're looking for the type of polystyrene that you're going to use for this, you want the this kind that's got quite a decent density to it. Some polystyrene is quite spongy and soft, um, but uh, the kind of packaging that you get with, say, uh, cookers or large screen TVs, where it's a, it has a lot more uh, density. And then using the hot wire cutter, um, just rocking backwards and forwards uh, in a sort of a zigzag motion. And you, you're trying to uh, remove initially the rectangular form. Uh, you, you're just trying to break that first of all. Um, but you need to just be wary that you don't uh, slice too thin um, because obviously the polystyrene is quite fragile um, uh, so those very thin areas will require some later attention if they do go a little too thin so from that concept art there's a real sort of um uh, twist i guess to the to the rock structures and i think that's kind of what i'm after here it almost reminds me of the old wily e. coyote cartoons and the rocks you used to see in the cartoons there so fairly stylized but i prefer a stylized look to any um, true to life realism it's a fantasy world after all now as i say the piece of concept that uh inspired this um i felt was a sort of a stepping down to the to the point that i wanted so the characters have to make their way across a descending set of um, separated out uh, rock structures. So just making sure that these uh, look like they work together properly. But I also intend these uh, individual pieces to remain individual. I want to be able to give different pathways anytime I use this terrain in other um, encounters. With that in mind then I need a base, something that uh, I can stick all of the rock structure onto. Um, I have this uh, chipboard that a lot of people use uh, it has a bit of weight in it as well, so that's going to um, help to uh, keep the pieces stable. Uh, so I'm just really hacking up a rough piece of uh, chipboard here to roughly fit the area of that piece of rock. And still allowing for some additional pieces at the base there as I widen it out a little uh, uh, to, uh, to break that shape up more. It's all fit down onto the chipboard with uh, just a multi-purpose adhesive. Um, this is a acrylic base one. Uh, I think it's a sort of hard as nails type uh, thing. But it works well with polystyrene and card. And I, it gives me that ability to just squidge it around, move it around. And it also helps to fill gaps as well. 
so now what I'm doing is the pieces of polystyrene that I was originally slicing out I am looking for interesting places to fit those to the main structure and that makes it much more complex and not like a singular piece of carved polystyrene and the eventual aim is to get that sort of a sweeping downward section uh, from which uh, the uh, lattice work of rock uh, structure will begin to grow out If you apply heat to polystyrene, it will get this hardened skin surface to it. Um, the important thing here is just to have your respirator on. Any kind of foam or, or, or styrene based uh, material needs uh, you to wear a respirator if you start applying heat to it. But the uh, end result is a very hard surface. It's brittle, but it's hard. Then I'm taking uh, acrylic based caulk uh, with a small amount of water in it just to give it a bit of a runniness and I am covering the whole of the pot, the structure with the caulk uh, as a initial seal and uh, toughener to try and give the polystyrene chunks a, a, a little bit of endurance, a little bit of longevity in their lifespan before I have to start repairing them from the abuses of the tabletop. I considered a number of different ways of doing the weird sort of lattice work at the base of the rock structures. Uh, in the end I decided that using an aluminium wire was probably going to give me the um, best kind of result in the most efficient amount of time. The idea here is to take uh, several pieces of the aluminium wire and connect them together and then just randomly uh, create holes is the best way I can sort of describe it as I make this network of uh, connections. Um, and I just arbitrarily picked a length of wire and I gave no real thought to how those connections came together I just played around until I had something that looked kind of in the right the right direction I left a couple of little pieces of wire so that I could uh, push them into the foam structure just anchor them and I think overall the general uh, technique for giving me a base to work on uh, came out pretty well it also helped to add a little bit of weight again to the base of the structure uh, to, uh, to give them some stability. So the next step is to add some bulk to these wires and I do that with hot glue just running a bead of glue over the wires making the overall texture wider and a little bit more interesting. And then where the lattice work of wire connects to the actual uh, rock structure itself I just drag hot glue up to uh, to extend that lattice work naturally into the rock surface to give it the look that it, that's where it's growing from. I've mentioned a number of times on previous videos that I um, actually fix my terrain together on the table using pins. EVA is practically self-repairing for pushing a pin through it so I know there's the option to use magnets but to be honest pins have worked for me till now and I've not really had much of a need to change uh, so I need to create a, a base of rock structure around this that's made up of EVA foam which I can then pin through onto the modular boards that I 
am also currently creating. So you can check out my video of the lava terrain to see how I cut rock uh, structures or my modular cliff terrain. And both those videos go into that uh, process I use for cutting uh, effective rock structure from EVA foam. I had this idea for how to create the spider webs. Um, parts of this I actually uh, found a better material for, but initially what I wanted was some very sturdy strands in which to lay the spider webs across. And so I came up with the idea of rolling cling film tightly uh, because it come, becomes really super strong when you do that. I added some heat just to kind of make it all bond together and uh, then snipped it off and I ended up with this very very tough strand to give the the initial radiating strands for the the webs themselves I then cut these down to lengths that were suitable to provide enough of a challenging span between the different rock structures Grab a few uh, suitable lengths, three, four maybe, hold them down and apply hot melt glue as the cross strand, the thinner part of the strand. This I felt was going to be able to give me the weave of the web quite effectively. What I hadn't counted for though was the hot melt glue actually making the cling film buckle under the heat. Uh, so I had to keep letting the heat gun cool down before I could actually use the glue. But it, 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 overall it worked and I think it worked very very well. I worked this step, uh, I hadn't said before, but I worked this step onto greaseproof paper so I was able to easily peel off this structure and it had a great amount of flex, it was going to be able to span areas, it was going to be big enough and wide enough and durable enough to hold minis as well, so that's the idea here. <laughs> I am not going to lie, this next step was infuriating. Um, I got the idea of using cotton wool across the webs uh, from Bard's Craft uh, he did a lovely uh, little uh, spider piece a while back. Uh, and he he also said how infuriating it was. But ev eventually you get this kind of ability to drag the cotton wool out uh, into thinner strands. But it, despite the fact that I was able to pull this cotton wool out uh, in a way that started to work, it was never really that effective. Um... I think it's going to depend on what kind of cotton wool you've got, but certainly these were the little cotton wool buds and it just was an absolute nightmare. It took me longer to do this bit than I think the entire rest of the build, I swear it. <laughs> I wanted to also create these hanging cocoons that were her, the spiders had uh, stored their food in. Um, so I used the same basic principle with the cling film. I felt I could get a nice texture with that, uh, just twisting it round to get these little uh, cocoon-like shapes that would hang down. And these were also uh, PVA'd and wrapped with a little bit of cotton wool as well. That was much easier because it was a, just a, a full surface that I was going over. I didn't need to get these strands as such. But that was um, that, that went a lot easier with the cotton wool. This old 
tub of jewelry bits has really served me very well over some considerable years now so i'm taking the uh, the round beads i want to make those spider egg sacks you can see in the concept art uh, so I'm taking the round beads and I'm just dribbling some hot melt glue over them uh, uh, fiddling around with them and leaving them to set and they should go on to create the spider eggs quite effectively once the hot melt glue dried I gave them an undercoat of white and then I airbrush them with this uh, very sort of vibrant green ink. This is an artist's colour, it's not one of the gaming colours, but any bright green ink would do here. And then I went in with this um, sunburst yellow from Vallejo, just to add a little bit of glow to the egg sacs. And so finally we come to the uh, painting of the rocks themselves. Now, any of you that know me know I never go for grey. Um, I always start with uh, richer colours. So I initially undercoat this with a black, just a black spray can. And then I've followed that with a, a heavy brushing of a very dark blue colour. Because I use artist blues, the best I can say is uh, this is a mix of Prussian blue and black. So it's a very deep navy blue. Um, that's followed up then by what I'm doing here with a more of a mauve colour. This is that same blue mixed with a little um, quinacridone magenta. Uh, but any purplish colour. So I suppose, was it imperial purple or something like that the Games Workshop used to do? I don't know if they still do. Uh, so you have to that sort of a uh, very sort of uh, plum colour, uh, maybe a bit lighter than a plum colour. And again, a heavy brushing with that purplish um, uh, colour. This is quite light. Uh, we want the colour to travel through the wash that we'll do later. So I give that an extra bit of pop. Now with this uh, light blue um just here and there still a fairly heavy brush but not as heavy as that mauve color uh, uh, before then applying a very dark purple uh, wash now that dark purple wash is actually the original mauve color uh, with black in it and then thinned down heavily <clears throat> uh, and that's going to knock all of the sort of the vibrancy right back but the subtlety of those intense colours will travel through to the final uh, piece. I think that one of the most important lessons you can learn about painting terrain, especially natural terrain, rocks and the like, is to layer. The more layers you can actually apply of subtle shifts in colour, changes in hue, changes in contrast the better that terrain piece will eventually end up looking so always hang on to that fact and it doesn't really matter what colors you actually use and i'd say experiment play around and don't be afraid because you can always paint it back and start again it's not a big issue so i took the light the uh, that sort of uh, intense blue that I used earlier on and I added a whole ton of white into that to give me my highlight layer and that's just a dry brush now across the whole of the surface just trying to catch all of that texture that's been laid into this point and really make it sing. I randomly glued all of those uh, cocoons just in odd spots and also the little egg sacs as well. Um, <clears throat> and then it was time to start adding some of the cobwebs to the stone structures themselves. I did debate not doing this so that it gave the pieces more versatility in terrain types. But in the end I decided, no, I really want this to be a monster lair. Uh, and so the addition of the webs works uh, on that.
on these pieces. So it was back to that infernal cotton wool and desperately trying to make it work. In fairness, it was a little easier on uh, these uh, rock pieces. I felt it was easier to roll out the cotton wool ball, give it a good coating of PVA, and then as you can see here, just uh, slap it on and then use a cocktail stick and my fingers to try and drag it out as best I could. This, don't get me wrong, this worked out in the end really well, but boy was it a nuisance, that cotton wool. The final step was painting the webs themselves, which was a pretty straightforward uh, job. So I'm just mixing a uh, dark brown, this is actually a burnt umber, with a little bit of black just to take the, uh, the redness out of it. And then I give the whole uh, of the webs, the, uh, the, those on the rocks, those that span between the rocks, I give them all a thorough soaking wash uh, with the uh, this uh, this colour, and then once that's dry, I have to say it seemed to take a very long time for this to dry. I don't know if that's something to do with the cotton wool, but once that's dry, I then mix a very light tan colour, which was actually a white and that brown burnt umber, and I just dry brushed everything on the rocks on the the web spans as well uh, i did lose the footage um of the of me doing the dry brushing on the rock webs but you can see it here uh where i'm just uh, brushing that color lightly across uh sorry it's a tiny bit out of focus there but you get the general idea so what do you think overall it worked out pretty well um it was a great encounter. Uh, there was a lot of fun, um, a lot of panic. People tend to not like spiders, um, <laughs> but it was, um, yeah, it worked out very, very well. Uh, they eventually got through it, obviously, and onto the Arachnomancer, um, where they then faced uh, another encounter. I have a board for that, which uh, you can find on my Instagram. Over the six to eight months that I've now been running the channel with um, the terrain and the art, I'm now starting to build enough pieces to start putting together more dynamic setups like this. Um, I've got here my uh, Rocky Valley, one of the uh, terrain blocks from that. At the back here, I've got my modular cliffs. Um, both uh, videos available to view and so I'm working on these as expansion kits to uh, further the use of these more geographic geological features uh, so I've got a few of these lined up to come out um, and you know I love every minute of bringing these videos to you but it takes a ton of work. It really does take a ton of work. So I really, really appreciate the comments. I answer all of them. I really do appreciate you if you click that subscribe button and hit that bell. YouTube really appreciates that as well. It helps me to build the channel. As you saw in my Monday montage, I've had had an investment put it forward for me uh, of the MacBook Pro, the um, X Pen uh, digital tablet, and that's really going to lift the game on my editing and the the speed at which I can do that side of the work. But it still takes a lot of time. And um, you know, going forward, I would like to bring more and more and more of this uh, to to you guys. Uh, if you can. Uh, go over to Patreon and help support that the channel and the creative work that I do. That really would um, help to make this work. And although the material costs of the pieces themselves are not too great, the equipment to do all this to you guys out there on YouTube and 
possibly Twitch in the near future. <laughs> they do cost a bit of money. Um, so any uh, help that you can give me over on Patreon will of course be massively uh, appreciated. And as that Patreon builds, I want to build on the rewards and the benefits for being there um, and supporting the creative work that I do. And of course, if you're interested in joining one of my courses, that's another way of helping me to keep building the channel. Uh, as that feeds back in. So guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for hitting the notification bell. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for every uh, bit of enjoyment you bring me in the comments. Uh, you really, in this weird, strange time of being isolated from everybody, it really brings a, a warm welcome into my into my studio, into my heart, uh, to be able to respond to you guys and chit chat that way. Um, so I'm gonna give you a closer look at this now and I will see you next week with my next build, uh, which I'm very much looking forward to showing you. Take care guys, I will see you very soon. Bye bye.